Writer Ministries, a ministry of helps, healing, evangelism, love, prayer, salvation. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Hello, everybody. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. I'm glad you're all here. Amen. How many are having a good time already? Amen. How many know we're going to hear the voice of the Lord tonight? Amen. How many are excited about that? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're here on the Holy Spirit, our fifth session, and we're glad you're participating with us. Let's open up with prayer. Let's put a demand upon the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. Amen. Father, we just thank you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit that gives us power. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us a teaching tonight. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're with us. And we give you praise and glory that we receive revelation, knowledge, illumination, and comparison in the Word of God. We give you praise and glory for this awesome teaching, how to hear all the three voices of the Godhead. And all the people of God said, amen. Yes, and amen and amen. Well, our text scripture, let's open up again to 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. And I'm sure most of you have been meditating on this scripture just to receive the revelation out of it. And the Bible says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. And all the people of God said, Yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. That's our text where we want to have communion of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We want to talk about how to hear all three voices of the Godhead this evening on our Holy Spirit teaching. And this is an amazing teaching. I've got a ton of scriptures. So I hope we get it all done in Jesus' name. So how to hear it. The small voice, the small inside voice, is your human spirit speaking and detecting the activity of the Holy Spirit. How I many you know you all have a voice that speaks to you and you say, well, that sounds like me. Everybody knows that's your human spirit speaking to you. Amen. We'll go to John chapter 16, please, and we're going to see some awesome scriptures. Bless the Lord for the scriptures, in Jesus' name. In John chapter 16, verse 13, as you're going to really realize, I'm going to repeat a lot of the same scriptures over and over again, but each time there's new revelation in it. Bless the Lord. John chapter 16, verse 13, saying, Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Amen. So the voice of the Holy Spirit is saying right here in verse 13, For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. So the voice of the Holy Spirit will not speak about himself. He takes the information that the Father gives to Jesus and communicates it to us. So the information that God's speaking to Jesus, Jesus speaking to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit giving it to us. You go through the chain of command. Everybody realizes that. Amen? Amen? He will guide you in all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. You all grasp that. Amen? Now, the Bible tells us over here in 1 John with some more excitement. Hallelujah for the scriptures. In 1 John chapter 4, we see in verse 16. This is an interesting scripture, and I use this a lot. I'm going to show you the revelation in it. But grasp on to hearing God, the Father, talk to you. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. So I've always said to you, and this is the same thing, but it's just being spoken here, you can't help but love me, because God is love, and God dwells in me, 
So therefore you love God who's in me, so I am the same as God, therefore you can't help but love me. Because God and I are, are one, and you can't help but love God, so you can't help but love me too. So you can see you can't help but love me. Amen. Because God is in me. And you can say the same things. But if you listen to the Godhead, which one is speaking? Well, it's God the Father. The God the Father. The voice of the Father are always words like, I love you. You are precious. Words that demonstrate the love that he has for us. When you hear the voice, or you hear those words, you know it's who's talking. It's your Father. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, let's turn to Romans chapter 8, and I'm going to open up your eyes of your understanding. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we go to chapter 8 of Romans, and we're going to look at verse 30. Praise the Lord. Moreover, whom he, who do you think we're talking about? God. This, this scripture I'm about to read you is all about the Father. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us, and who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? And as you go on, you'll understand, it's God that's speaking to us in these scriptures. That's your Heavenly Father. How much does He love us? He's for us, not against us. Amen. And when we start identifying it, you're going to start seeing when God speaks, when Jesus speaks, when the Holy Spirit speaks, when man speaks, and when the devil speaks in the Bible. You're going to start identifying and locating this thing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. You can see that this scripture is all about God the Father. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Isn't this amazing? It's awesome. This is about the love of the Father that is shed abroad in our hearts. And it's the Holy Spirit that is the communicator of everything that comes from the heart. You've got to realize he's the one who's communicating. <gasps> I feel God's love. Yeah, the Holy Spirit made sure you did. Say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, we're talking about God, the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're going to talk about God. Turn with me to John chapter 14. Look at some new scripture. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> John chapter 14. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this is amazing scripture. Look at verse 23 with me. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. All you got to do is keep the words of Jesus, amen, and the love of God. My Father will love you. Powerful words, right? So the Holy Spirit is revealing the Father and Jesus in this scripture. This is amazing. Praise the Lord. So you start going, wow. So when you see the love of God, he's talking to us constantly. And when you hear a prophetic word and you hear, I love you with all my heart, it's God the Father talking. It's so amazing. 
And I've, and I've had people say, well, how do I know when I'm talking to God? I'll show you a really easy, simple, 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 think a way to do it and listen to it. We've all seen it in Matthew chapter 6, Our Father, right? Which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We all know that one, right? Yep. Say it like this. Our Father. Everybody say it with me. Our, Our Father. No, you didn't get into it. Now listen. Our, Our Father. And when you begin to say, our Father, you are talking to who? God. You're talking about my Father. And man, you can just, you can just feel the love just saying, oh, He's my Father. He's ours, but He's mine. And you can have an awesome relationship just doing that one. Praise God. First John chapter 1, please. And as people realize, you know, you've, you come to the Lord through Jesus and you learn that Jesus did such and such for us and he died and rose again. And it's amazing how we come to love Jesus. And then all of a sudden Jesus says, I'm going to introduce you to my father. <gasps> and then, I don't know. You know you're going to talk to God. Yeah. And so we're going to John, 1 John chapter 1. And when we, we, we finally get into that revelation knowledge that I can have a relationship with God as well as Jesus, and then all of a sudden it dawns on you, hey, and it's the Holy Spirit who's here now. And I can have a relationship with Him as well. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 3, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And you start seeing that I can have a fellowship with God. I've had amazing dreams. And I've known I've been like in a classroom situation. Sitting in the front row. God, my father, is standing in front of a podium speaking to me. That father-son talk. And you know it was God talking to you. You didn't have any qualms. Was it Jesus or the Holy Spirit? I know it was God. And yet, you wake up and you go, whoa, that was awesome. And that's the fellowship God wants us to have. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. So the voice of Jesus. We want to talk about the voice of Jesus as well. He speaks of his acts. What did Jesus do? The triumphant word in authority. He speaks about what he did or what he is doing on your behalf. I'm interceding for you. I am risen. I have given to you authority. These are the things that Jesus, when you hear words like, you know, it's Jesus talking to you. Since Jesus is the head of the church, he usually speaks about the doctrines of the church. And those are the things he wants us to do. For example, it's do unto others as you'd have them to do unto you. You know, that's a doctrine, isn't it? In other words, be nice to somebody because you want them to be nice to you. Amen. So it's an awesome thing to hear the voice of the Lord speaking to you. This, I, this is how Jesus speaks. Turn with me to Acts chapter 10. Praise the Lord for the scriptures. I am so glad we have these, aren't you? That we can identify, and there's so much to say, but I can't do it all in this teaching, but I'm going to get you started on it. And I know the Holy Spirit will reveal more to you. Acts chapter 10, and we're going to be in verse 19. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Hmm. How many have ever had the Holy Spirit speak to you like that? Let's learn how the Holy Spirit speaks, okay? In the scripture, we see that Peter is having a difficult time. If you've read this, you know, uh, he, was, he saw a sheet come down full of unclean animals. As far as he's concerned, those are yuck, yuck, yuck. And he, and he saw the vision three times, and I spoke to him, kill, eat. And Peter said, hey, I'm not going to eat that. There's no, no way. But in verse 17, after he saw the vision three times, Peter doubted in himself what this vision, which he had seen, should mean. Then the Holy Spirit speaks to him there. <coughs> While well, he thought about that, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men seek you. So we know that the Holy Spirit is speaking to, to Peter, and he's having a difficult time. And in that scripture, as you read from verse 9 on down, he's thinking in his mind that the gospel was only for the Jews. He saw Jesus 
say to the lady whose daughter was grievously vexed that, uh, hey, the bread is only for the, the, the Jews. You know, we're not giving a healing away. I'm only called to the lost sheep of Israel. So Peter's in his mind's eyes thinking, hey, <laughs> this gospel's for the Jews only. And that's what's going through his heart. And as you read the scriptures, this is what I love best about what God said to him in verse 15. What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. And he's trying to figure out, what does this mean? How many of you have ever had that thought? Okay, turn with me to the Old Testament of Habakkuk. Habakkuk. How many of you have read that already since you're reading your Bible through this year? Amen. It's just before Nahum and then Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. Now, before I read you the scripture, I want to read you what I've written here. The Holy Spirit, so I've talked about God talking to you, talked about how the Lord Jesus talked. Now I'm going to talk to you about how the Holy Spirit talks to you, okay? The Holy Spirit can use many revelation, different kinds of avenues of revelation and illumination in leading you. How I many of you want to be led by the Spirit of God? But then you're called the children of God, amen? The Holy Spirit mainly not always, I'm just saying mainly, uses visions in talking to you. All right, there are three types of visions. Does everybody know how many visions there are? Let's go over them. Three types. There are spiritual visions, or visions by your spirit. These are not with natural eyes, but with the eyes of your spirit. So when you read in Ephesians chapter 1 that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened is an illumination process and that's a way how the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Amen. Amen. But let's look how a Holy Spirit speaks to us in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. How can you see words? I will watch to see what he will say to me. You can't see what he's saying to you. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> How many can see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I will watch to see in my spirit realm what the Spirit of the Lord is demonstrating to me in my inner man. That's what he's saying. I will watch to see what he will answer, what he'll say to me, and I shall answer when I'm reproved. Let me know that you can talk to God and he'll ask you a question and you can tell him all you want. But that's not the right answer. How many know? So you better just say, you know, Lord, just tell me. It's a whole lot easier to do that than to tell the Lord for an hour and a half what you think. Because he'll stand there and listen. I mean, if he's talking to you, you better be quiet and let him continue speaking. How many know what I'm saying? Amen. All right. You wouldn't want him to say, you know, I wanted to tell you, but I got to go. <laughs> I don't want that. Neither do you. All right. Acts chapter, let's get you. Excuse me, Acts chapter 9. We want to go back to the book of Acts again, please. I want to flip us all around tonight, so have fun. Praise the Lord. In this scripture, we're going to be seeing how Paul saw a spiritual vision. Okay? And the vision that Paul had was only for him. Okay? Acts chapter 9, and we'll start in verse 3. <clears throat> and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around him about a light from heaven, shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why per persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Okay, so here's Paul. Uh, he's having a spiritual vision, and it was for him. And if you read the rest of the, the chapter, you'll find out the guys didn't know what happened. All they know is that he fell on the floor, and nobody could say anything, and he was blind when he got up. He couldn't say much. So they, they, they don't know exactly what happened to him. All they saw was the light, and that is it. So here's Paul having a spiritual vision. So you all remember what spiritual vision is, right? It's not with your natural eyes, but with the eyes of your human spirit, Okay. Acts chapter 26, please. And as you identify this, because you're going to say, okay, how is the Holy Spirit going to show me something? Ah, you're starting to learn how he, how he functions. And since you know how your human spirit works, you should be able to work with the Holy Spirit in this. Say, oh, maybe I missed out on spirit, soul, and body teaching. Oh, okay, you probably should get that too. Amen. 
Proverbs chapter 20, excuse me, Acts chapter 26, verse 13. And at midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, say, you all fall to the ground when the Holy Ghost shows up, bam. Amen. People say, oh, how come you lay hands on people? They fall to the ground. And I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Amen. So we know the other people with Paul did not hear or see Jesus. All we know is it was for Paul. Isn't it amazing? Like I shared the other day on my teaching on Sunday that the man next to me didn't hear what the Holy Spirit yelled at me, but he saved me a lot of years of tears. In Jesus' name, amen. Acts chapter 10, please. And so... As we go on, we start to see, okay, these are some of the ways that the Spirit of the Lord does do certain things to teach us, to open us up. Amen. Praise God. We'll see in verse 9, Acts 10, verse 9. Thank you, Jesus. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry. Everybody say, he got in the flesh. He got in the flesh. You didn't say it. He got, he got in the flesh. He became very hungry. And here he's up to, where, to do what? Pray. Come on. He's just like the rest of us. He went up there to pray, but he got hungry. Anybody ever been there? Distractions come all the time. And he would have eaten. Notice the scriptures. But while they made ready, he fell into a what? A trance. All right. That's where I want to stop right there. Well, let me just go on. And he saw heaven opened. And a certain vessel descending unto him, as had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Amen. So this is the second type of a vision, a trance. This is where your senses are suspended. Okay? Holy Spirit puts you in a situation. You don't even know what's going on. The time, day, nothing. You just, it's over with. Bang. And this information comes to him. Now, you all re realize this is really cool. He fell into a trance. Well, he just didn't do this. Somebody didn't want to oh. Speak to me, I've got you in a trance. That is not what we're talking about. This is a Holy Spirit trance. This is where your physical self is suspended. You don't know, smell, taste, touch, feel, time, whatever. Zap, it's gone. Acts chapter 16. Bless the Lord in Jesus' name. The third type of a vision is where we're going. Verse 9. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, tomorrow, oh no, it says immediately. And this is where people in the world get mixed up. They say, oh, yeah, could you give me five confirmations that I saw this? Well, nobody else seen it but you. You better know the difference. So I'm teaching you here. Amen. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. Assuredly, gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. And I says, this is an area that I have identified in my life. When I get a night vision called a dream, I act upon it immediately. I don't sit around and wait. I do something about it. This is what God said to do. If I don't know exactly what to do, I talk to him and get the answer. Amen. How many know that's why you're here, learning the Holy Spirit to teach you? So we just now saw three types of vision. We have the, the spiritual, natural eyes of your human spirit seeing something. We have the second type of vision, which is a trance. We have the third type, which is an open vision. Amen. Where all your senses are intact. Notice it didn't say dream. It said a vision appeared to Paul in the night. Say amen. Amen. All right, so the predominant language of the Holy Spirit is visions. Mm -hmm. Spiritual visions, open and trance visions. Turn with me to Acts chapter 2. And once you identify how the Holy Spirit starts to communicate with you, develop that area of your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, 
and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Isn't that awesome? But just so you capture this scripture, I already know that he's speaking and, and sharing the gospel from Joel, correct? I'm going to identify something for you so you can get it. Let's go over to Joel, which he said in verse 16. And we're at Joel 2.28. So let's go over there to Joel. And I'm, keep your finger here. Don't, list, don't lose this spot. We're going to Joel. Okay. Here you go. 2.28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Let me show you the difference. Did everybody get, are you on Joel 2.28? Mm -hmm. You get your finger, Acts 2.17? Okay, look. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit. Everybody say, pour out my spirit. Flip on over here to Acts chapter 2, 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, say, I will pour out of my spirit. Everybody see the difference? I will pour out. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out of my spirit. There's a difference. Does everybody know the difference? Let me help you out. The Holy Spirit was come by the power of God. He said, wait to Jerusalem. Wait till the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And they did. So God poured out the Holy Spirit, and it came upon those 120 people. Now, the Holy Spirit took the people, and those people went out and spread the gospel. We know they went down to Samaria. Remember that? Okay? Remember who went down to Philip, preached the gospel, and then Peter came down, and they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Out of my spirit. So the people that's been filled comes out of, say out of, and they get baptized with the Holy Spirit. So it's the people and the Holy Spirit working together the first time God poured them out. Are you all getting this? So when you start seeing, I don't know how many people identify that, but I thought I'd bring it to your attention so you could tell. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. So the predominant language is that. People see visions. They hear dreams. They have visions given to them. You shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Hey, how come they're not? Because no one's taught them how. And that's why you're here. And once a person starts identifying, just imagine, here you are in school and you don't know the answer. And you begin to pray in tongues and the Holy Spirit gives you the answer. Oh, how much easier is the homework. Amen. Mm -hmm. I do a lot. I'll sit down and i say, Lord, i got a message to pray. I, go, I want to do this. i got a problem on the computer. I'm not sure what to do with it. It's done this, done that. Pray in tongues. Bam. Got the answer. Get it fixed. You're on your way. Just that fast. How many know that you need the Holy Spirit? Amen? Amen. So how many see that God the Father talks to us? Did you all see in Acts chapter 2 it was the Holy Spirit speaking, but it says God? Because mm -hmm. he's already poured out. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, who's prompting Peter, the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. I, I just don't have time right now in the video, but I can show you in the scripture in the book of Jeremiah where it says, The Lord thy God is speaking to you. And you come back over to Hebrews and it says, The Holy Spirit said. And you go back over. These are the same words that were said in, in Jeremiah, but it was the Holy Spirit speaking. Because the Holy Spirit never speaks of himself. Oh, okay. Now you're getting it. Say, Praise the Lord. We're going to move on, switch gears. Mm -hmm. All right, and switch gears to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And I got a great amen from everybody watching TV. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Why are people filled with the Holy Spirit? That's a question. Why are they filled with the Holy Spirit? Why so important? Okay. All right. Let's turn to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Since you're halfway there, just turn the page. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Not in you, but upon you. And he shall be and you shall be, what? Witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, uttermost part of the earth. Say, we are living in the uttermost part. Could you say we're a long ways away from Samaria and Jerusalem? Yep. So we're at the uttermost. Now you stop and think, we are at the uttermost. We're a long ways. So that scripture is coming to pass for us today. Amen. All right. So the Holy Spirit... He is the legal witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? Guess who's wide awake when he's arisen? Mm -hmm. Guess who was there inside the cave? Holy Spirit. 
He's the legal witness. Amen? He's the only one who can witness to and demonstrate the resurrection of Jesus. Everybody say amen. Amen. All right. So why are we being spirit-filled? Why do we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit? So we too can become what? Witnesses of the resurrection. Say praise the Lord. You mean there's more than just praying in tongues? Yes. Say thank you Jesus. All right. Turn with me to chapter 4 of the book of Acts. This is a very powerful scripture, what you're about to read. <clears throat> Verse 1. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them. Listen, folks. They didn't say, come with us. They went and physically grabbed these guys, hooked onto them, and came upon them. That's what that means. They're not just saying, hey, come on, let's go. Everybody can get the wrong impression. These guys grabbed a hold of them. It wasn't some nice thing that happened to them. They came upon them. The, the temple, captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people. Here you go, listen to this. And preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Now, you highlight that. Preached through, say everybody, through is a preposition. Well, thank you for saying that. Through is a preposition, which means by the means of. That word through means by the means of. And preached by the means of Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. All right? That's a very powerful scripture that you've got to grasp. Being through. Filled with the Holy Spirit means we can preach through Jesus, not about Jesus. Let me tell you about Jesus. Or would you like to hear Jesus himself speak to you? Yeah. Which would you prefer? Through Jesus. And how many people do you know that are preaching through Jesus or just about Jesus. So there's being baptized with the Holy Ghost, being filled with the power of God, gives you the unction to preach through Jesus. These people were grieved that they taught the people and they knew that they were preaching through Jesus. They didn't have to ask them. They can tell there's a difference. Say, thank you, Lord. So baptism in the Holy Spirit, is it that valuable? Yeah, these people knew something, that they were preaching differently than others. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit does something for you besides praying in tongues. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Then in Acts chapter 3, we see over here in verse 6, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Now, verse 14. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So what is Peter telling us is that what I have, what do I have? There's a difference. It's by faith, by the means of Jesus, that the man was healed. It was by faith through Jesus that the man was healed. Are you hearing me say it backwards? He preached through Jesus, which is by the means of Jesus, 
this man was healed by the means of the faith of Jesus, or was this man healed through the faith of Jesus? Do you get this? This is revelation that the Spirit of the Lord is telling. Why do I need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Because I want to be able to preach through Jesus. Also, I perceive that I now own the name of Jesus. What did Peter say? But such as I have, give I thee, I'm going to give to you something that you don't have. I'm going to give to you the name of Jesus, which I possess. I possess. This is mine. The Lord has given me his name. You stop and think what that means. And are you taking that? Why? When you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you identify with something. Wow. Peter is now the possessor of the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is power. Power. The name of Jesus is power. And when you realize, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. So, do I have faith in the name of Jesus? Or do I have faith through faith? By means of faith in his name. So, do I put my faith, the grain of mustard seed, into the name of Jesus? So, when I say, in the name of Jesus, the faith that I have is in that name, and that name has power, which is going to set you free. And that man rose up, and immediately... His feet and ankle bones will receive strength. So what do you possess? You possess the name of Jesus. But what do you get with it? Power. And baptism of the Holy Spirit. Whoa. You're not only a witness. You don't only have the capability of preaching through Jesus. But now you have faith in the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus is the power. So it's the access key that we have faith and boldness in which unlocks such as I give you, said Jesus, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And everybody goes, oh boy, I got keys. I'm getting keys. It's the name of Jesus. What you're getting, that's the key. Everybody looks at that. Why? I've got keys. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Memory said that. But the key is in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's the key. The access with faith and boldness. Amen. Praise the Lord. So when you begin to look, why am I baptized with the Holy Spirit? What am I getting besides praying in tongues? Prophetically speaking, I've got power. And I get to preach through Him. And you get up there and say, I haven't preached, but man, let the Holy Ghost start showing you what you get with that name. It'll set you free. Say, thank you, Lord. We're going to Romans chapter 1. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 1. And I'm going to read you scriptures right out of the Bible. And you go, yeah. Say, thank you, Holy Ghost, for revelation knowledge. The Holy Spirit's moving tonight. Mm -hmm. Concerning his son, verse 3, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Spirit of holiness, obviously, is what? Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Holy Spirit, from the resurrection from the dead. And you go, yeah? Well, the Son of God with power... Why do you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? So you are called a son of God with power. Whoa! I'm the child of the Most High God, which calls me a son of God with power. And you grasp this, you'll start recognizing a whole lot more going on with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, more than just praying in tongues. Are you getting this? So, great Power is the witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Would you like me to read it? And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. And you've got to realize the Holy Spirit has great power to raise the man from the dead. Well, what about you? Is he going to use you? Yeah, because you're called the child of the Most High God and you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit with power. 
Say, thank you, Jesus. Making you a witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Say, thank you, Jesus. And you go, what do you mean making me a witness? Are you going to heaven? Well, I think... Yeah, how do you know? I just know it. Well, that's the witness. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. With power. Yes. Yeah. Before you baptize, well, I don't know you from I think the devil stole my resurrection. I don't know you. And you go through all that. But when your spirit fills, hey, I know I'm going to heaven. How do you know? Well, that's the witness. There's power associated with that, isn't there? Mm -hmm. It's the power. The power is the living, visible witness of the resurrection of Jesus. Let me say it again. The power is the living, visible witness of the resurrection of Jesus. It is the outward evidence to unbelievers. They do not necessarily buy your inner witness. Oh, I just know I'm saved. Well, prove it. I tell that to people. Are you saved? You're going to heaven? Yeah, well, show me. Prove it. You can't. Unless... You have a demonstration of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And how are you going to do that? You're going to pray in tongues. You'll hear the voice of the Lord. You'll read his mail. You'll heal the sick. You'll cause someone to get well, get saved. Oh, there's more to this than that. Praise God. It's the outward evidence to unbelievers. Just because you have the inner witness that Jesus is alive does not mean that they're going to believe you. How many of you have tried to get someone saved? Well, Jesus loves you. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Act like he's not even around. So you have this inner witness because the Holy Spirit gives it to you. How are you going to demonstrate that the living, visible proof of the resurrection is alive without being baptized with the Holy Spirit? You definitely need him. Amen. Okay? So the Holy Spirit declares that Jesus is the Son of God with power. Everybody say, the Holy Spirit does this. Amen. Amen. Jesus has power because he is the Son of God, right? What about us? We're called brothers. We're part of the family. And what he did for one, he does for the other because there is no how many can see that? God doesn't play favorites. What he does for one, he does for everybody. So what he did for Jesus, he's doing for us. Jesus first born from the dead. How many are born from the dead? Right here. Mm -hmm. Say, thank you, Lord. Did he get baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yes, he did. Did we? Yes, we can. What are we going to do with the same thing he did? Destroy the works of the devil. Say, this is getting fun. Amen. That's why we got baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Look at verse 9. I guess throw that in. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my what? Spirit. My spirit serves God. And he's a witness. Amen. In the same chapter of Romans, chapter 1, verse 16, it says, And I guarantee you, you go to somebody who's not spirit-filled, yet they believe in Jesus, they'll have this problem. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. How many people would say, let's go out and sold one. Well, gee, I, I don't know if I could do that. Why are you ashamed? Well, I just, I just don't feel comfortable. I don't want to do it. Well, they're lacking the power, aren't they? They are ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And it says here, For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek, that means you and me. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. Bells and whistles just went off in your spirit, man, when you heard the word reveal, manifest, reveal, enlighten, illuminate. Zzz, what happened? It's the power of God, okay? It's the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith that is written, the just shall live by faith. And most people say, I'm living by faith. Can you give me a handout? That is not what that scripture means. Well, we're living by faith, you know, uh, uh, we don't work. That isn't what God's talking about. But people turn there and say, well, I'm living by faith. So that means you got to give me something. You're a beggar. That's not living by faith. You're begging. And the Bible says the just, the justified, shall live by faith. The faith that it's talking about is the faith in the name of Jesus, which there is power, and you're doing something with it. Say, praise the Lord. I'm starting to get it. Hallelujah. 
So the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. All right? Say, so praise God. Jesus Christ declared the Son of God with power. What about us? Mm -hmm. And it took the power of God to get you what? Saved. Mm -hmm. And who's the power of God? Holy Spirit. I knew you knew that from the resurrection from the dead. So now you can preach through Jesus. Now you've got power in the name of Jesus. Now you're starting to understand how your faith functions with the Holy Spirit. The whole thing getting easier all the time. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Praise God in Jesus' name. Every believer needs faith. Amen? Amen? And every believer's faith needs to be anchored in the power. And that's a problem. Because not everybody's faith is anchored in the power of God. It's anchored in your faith that God gave you, not in God's power. And once you get this, you're going to go say, praise God. All I have to do is take what God gave me called a little bit of faith, and I'm going to put my faith into the name of Jesus, which is going to open up the switch and let the power flow through that wire and illuminate the light bulb. Everybody knows electricity works, right? On the switch. God gives me the power. Lay hands. Do what you got to do. Open your mouth. It opens the switch. Out comes the power in the name of Jesus. Is this that simple? Electricity is simple, isn't it? You know, you, it's going to go through the wire. You can't see it. And you can't taste it. You just can measure it. And even then it went through it so fast you couldn't tell what electron went, went, went on the other side. You don't know how fast electrons travel. 186,000 miles per second. But do you really know if it's that fast? <laughs> and so how fast is the power of God? Quicker than this. Amen. So, when we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, listen to this, verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and fear and much trembling. Come on. And my speech and my preaching was not of enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the what? Power of God. Say, praise the Lord. Praise so you get a person who's born again, who's not spirit-filled, so do a demonstration of the Spirit right now. And they'll look at you like, huh? I don't know how to do that. Because you don't have it. That's why. Now you get a person who's spirit-filled and who's not trained. They won't know either. But you take a person who's listening to the Holy Spirit, who's being trained by the Spirit of God, who understands what God gave him through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, who is developing his human spirit to function with God, to do the works of God. He can do a demonstration of the Spirit of God and with power. And you say, what's that? It can be anything that's necessary to demonstrate that Jesus Christ is alive from the dead. Would you like to get saved? There's one demonstration. Would you like to get spirit filled? There's the second one. Would you like to get healed? There's the third one. Would you like me to read your mail? There's the fourth one. And you can go on and on because the Holy Spirit's full of excitement. It's not hard, but when you are demonstrating the power of God, it's for a purpose, not to play with. It's for a purpose, to get someone saved. Definitely saved. If they're already saved, Get them operating with the things of God. Say amen. amen. So we need to anchor our faith in the power of God. Can you tell me, this is some good thoughts and ideas, why you should be baptized with the Holy Spirit? Because if it's not functioning in your life, do you think you ought to start? Say amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I got news for you. Had I had this teaching when I got spirit filled, I would have had a whole lot more fun. Amen. A whole lot more excitement. And as you learn, and as you start operating what God says you can do, you're going to enjoy it. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2, please. We've got a couple more scriptures, and we're almost done. Praise the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 2, let's start in verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Are you with me? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His own will. 
So the witness is by signs and wonders, which the witnessing is saying Jesus is alive from the dead, and this, and this sign and this wonder demonstrates it by the Holy Spirit and with power. The Holy Spirit, so that sign and wonder could be a healing of a person's back, could be whatever is necessary at the moment to make them understand that Jesus is alive. Now, what do you think? Would you like to receive him as your Lord and Savior? And wrap the deal up. Say, praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the manifest Jesus alive to our generation. You stop and think about that. Why is he here? And why are we being spirit-filled? To demonstrate that Jesus is alive to our generation. Mm -hmm. Now, how many of us are my age have got children who've got children? So children's children. And the two, that's two more generations that's already here on this, light, on this earth. And do those generations know the power of God being demonstrated in their lives and in their children's lives? So they can obviously know that Jesus Christ is alive and it's not just some myth. It is the power of God being demonstrated that Jesus Christ is alive. Say, thank you, Lord. So to speak in tongues is the only evidence of the baptism that what you have received from the Holy Spirit. You didn't have it for, now you got it. And you can't get rid of it because once you get it, it's yours. God doesn't take it back. And, you, and there's no worry about what you do right or wrong. God gave you a gift. He doesn't take it back. So you have a demonstration of praying in tongues, which is the power of the, of the Holy Spirit, demonstrating that Jesus Christ is alive. And a lot of people don't get it. So they sometimes need a little more demonstration. So they fall on the floor. Now how did that happen? Demonstration of the power of God. Wow, there's a whole lot going on here. One more scripture. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory in the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high by the word of his power. The proof that Jesus is alive is the visible manifestation of power. So when you see a miracle before your eyes, it proves that Jesus is alive. Yeah. It's nothing for me to demonstrate the power of God. It's something for you to see it and to receive it. Because that's what it's for. And each and every person can be baptized with the Holy Spirit of my spirit into each person so they can have dreams, visions, and prophesy and demonstrate that Jesus is alive. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. So Paul preached Jesus resurrected. The power being the demonstration of a man who was alive from the dead, now living in resurrection power. That's Jesus our Lord. Amen. So we are spirit-filled to demonstrate Jesus to our generation. If Jesus is preached, he must be manifested. And you'll go to a lot of churches and nothing's manifested. But I want to say this to end it. And I say there are a lot of churches that preach Jesus and get people saved. Amen. Therefore, he's being manifested. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this awesome outpouring of the Holy Spirit on teaching us the Godhead, the voices of the Godhead, and the visible demonstration of the witness of Jesus Christ alive with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for giving us revelation, illumination, and comparison in all these scriptures. And all the people of God said, amen. yes and amen and amen.